Today I will be reading you Max Goes to the Moon, a science adventure with Max the dog. So this book is a fiction story with a little bit of science mixed in. Dedication page to children around the world, follow your dreams, study hard, and someday you'll live in a world as wonderful as the one we imagine in this book. This is the story of how Max the dog helped people return to the moon, this time to stay. It all began on the morning of the parade. Max had just returned from his trip to the space station. He was a hero after all. None of the astronauts could have come home safely without him. As Max's car drove along Pearl Street, Max looked to the west and began to howl just as the moon set over the mountains. In truth, Max howled because he heard a siren. He always howls at sirens, but the TV reporters didn't know that, so they thought he was howling at the moon. A reporter spotted Max's friend Tori. Why did Max howl at the moon? he asked. I'm not sure, said Tori. Maybe it's because he wants to go there. Well, Tori's maybe was good enough for TV. By the next day, Max's dream of going to the moon was all over the news. And because no one had been to the moon in a long time, it seemed like it was about time for someone or some dog to go. It's not easy to go to the moon. It takes big rocket engines to get a spaceship off the Earth. It takes careful planning to make sure. Oh, oh no shadow. It takes careful planning to make sure the astronauts reach the moon and come back safely. And it costs a lot of money. But everywhere Max went, the crowds chanted, send Max to the moon. People wrote letters to the president. So a new moonship was built and assembled at the space station. Tori gave Max the good news. You are going to go to the moon, she said. I sure hope they let me come with you. Max went into astronaut training again. The other astronauts were glad to have Max back. Max made the long training sessions seem fun. Somehow he always managed to find a stick. He loved to play fetch while the astronauts trained in the water tank. He also loved to play tug of war. And guess who always won? Tori thought that Max should know a little history before his trip. So she told Max about the first astronauts who went to the moon. Listen carefully, Max. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first people to walk on the moon. Their mission was called Apollo 11. They landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Neil Armstrong stepped out first. Do you know what he said when he took his first moon step? Armstrong said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Do you understand, Max? Max barked, and Tori took that as a yes. Good boy, Max, said Tori. NASA chose six experienced astronauts to go to the moon with Max. Since Max and Tori made such a good team, Tori got to go along too. So the crew of seven humans and one dog blasted off into space. Within a few hours, they were docked at the space station where their moonship was waiting. After launch on the space station, the crew boarded the moonship. Oh, that was after lunch 
on the space station. The crew boarded the moonship. The crew fired the moonship's rockets. The crew fired the moonship's rocket engines to gain speed, leaving Earth orbit. Once on their way, they turned off the engines and coasted toward the moon. The trip took a little more than two days. Soon, the moon loomed large in the window, with the Earth far behind. The crew turned the ship around, so, so firing the rocket engines slowed it down. As the moon ship neared the surface, the blast from its engines kicked up a cloud of moon dust. Then it settled gently onto the moon. Max was so excited about reaching the moon that the crew had a hard time getting a spacesuit on. It took three of them just to hold Max while the others pulled the spacesuit over his legs. Tori made sure that Max's tail went in the right place. Then they closed all the buckles and attached his helmet. Finally, they checked carefully to make sure that the spacesuit was airtight. When they opened the airlock, Max jumped out. You should have seen the look on his face. He went much higher and farther than he had expected. It also took him much longer to come down than he was used to on Earth. Tori watched out the window and said, That's one giant leap for a dog! For prosperity, the astronauts fenced off the spot where Max made his first paw prints on the moon. There is no wind or rain on the moon, so those paw prints are still there today, even though it has been many years since Max's first moon trip. Max thought it would be fun to play with a stick. He didn't see any, so he decided to look behind a big rock. But when he poked his head into the rock shadow, he couldn't see a thing. It was darker than the darkest night, and cold too. Max leaped over backward with a look of surprise and worry. Tori bounded over to calm him down. It's okay, Max. You're a good boy. Just try and stay out of the shadows. Anyway, you won't find any sticks on the moon. Nothing lives here, so there aren't any trees. Here, I brought a frisbee to play with. Tori got off a good throw. Even though her big spacesuit glove made it a little hard to hold the frisbee, Max bounded after it, but it didn't curve the way Max expected, and he missed it by a lot. Tori quickly realized why Max was confused. He didn't know that objects move differently when there's no air. Tori picked up a rock and pulled a feather from her pack. Look at this feather, she explained to Max. On Earth, the air would make it float gently to the ground. But there's no air here on the moon, so it falls just like the rock. Tori picked up the frisbee and threw it again. This time, Max knew what to do. She threw it very high, so Max had time to get under it. He stopped and turned around to see the frisbee coming down. He was perfectly positioned for the catch. There was just one problem. Max, Tori, and the astronauts had plenty of work to do for the next few days. They collected moon rocks for science, and they set up telescopes to study distant planets and stars. But most of all, they loved gazing upward at the Earth, which seemed to hang in one place in the sky. Soon, the longer shadows told Max and the crew that darkness was coming. It was time to leave. Once everyone was aboard the boon ship, Max and Tori waved goodbye to the moon, and the crew closed the door. They fired the rocket engines and blasted off the moon. Just 12 days after leaving the Earth, Max, Tori, and the rest of the astronauts were back on the space station. Then, a space shuttle took them home. Back on Earth, Billions of people watched Max's trip on the news. Everyone talked about it. Some grown-ups said the trip wasn't worth the money it cost. But children understood the excitement of it all. They asked their parents to help 
send Max to the moon again, but this time to build a big colony where many children could go and visit him and learn about the universe. The children were so convincing that all the nations of the world decided to work together to build a big domed colony on the moon. The domes covered homes, offices, and of course, the University of the Moon. They were filled with air so that no one needed a spacesuit inside. Food grew in greenhouses and water was carefully recycled. Outside the domes, astronauts built great telescopes to observe the universe. Students and scientists made important new discoveries almost every day. The building of the moon colony also changed a lot of things back on Earth. Children tried to learn more in school in hopes that they might get to attend the University of the Moon. Grown-ups saved their money for tourist trips to the moon. But most importantly, the beautiful views of Earth from the moon made everyone realize that we all share a small and precious planet. Of course, none of it would have happened without Max. Max was glad he had been so helpful, but he was not the type of dog to stop at that. It's a big universe out there. Where would he go next? <laughs>